Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars, and today we are in Excelsior Springs, Missouri at another Vanderbrink auction preview. I'm here with Bob's son, Dan, who will be taking us through all the cars here. I'm explaining what he can on the cars. Um, the sale is next weekend, which is November the 11th. The, November 11th in Excelsior Springs, and starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 a.m. Yep. On-site and online bidding. Uh, let's, get, uh, let's get looking at these cars, and and uh, happy bidding. All right, Dan, so first of all, how many cars total are in this are in this collection? And uh, what's the reason for your dad selling now? So we've got 83 that are gonna be in the sale this weekend. Um, between me and him, we've got a little over 130 cars in total. And we're just trying to thin things out so it's manageable and we can actually redo some of the cars that we really want to. Some of the cars in the sale have already been redone. And um, you know, we both just love old cars in general. So some of them, it's a labor of love and we just hate to see them sit too long and to the point that they're not something anyone can enjoy and rebuild. Yep, so. so some of these can be rebuilt. Some are parts cars, some are redone, kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Perfect, yeah. well let's start here with this one and kind of go down the go down the road. All righty, first things first. What can you tell me about this car? What is it? So um, it's a 57 Ford Fairlane. Um, it's something that we picked up about 12 years or so ago, I believe. It, it, that's about when Bob got it. Um, it's claim to fame is, of course, it's got a big block. It's got a 429 in it, so that's kind of its main appeal. And it did run and drive. It does run and drive. It does run and drive. It ran and drove when we got it, and uh, it still runs and drives. It's been moved around here on the lot, so. It needs some love, but. It does need some love. With 57, though, they're still pretty desirable, just like with the Tri-5 57s, you know, with the Chevys. And, um, you know, parts are available for them pretty readily for the 57 Fords, so. Okay, perfect. Next one here is a 69 or 70 Impala. Yeah, I don't know very much about this one. Bob's had it for quite a while. I know it runs and drives. Um, you know, it, it, it's definitely, the, the, the car's complete here. It does run and drive. Um, that's really about all I know on that one. I don't know when it showed up exactly. I believe he bought a couple cars at the same time and this was in that collection. Fair enough. And also guys, if you want to see more in-depth photos, everyone has the lot number on it. Go to vanderbrinkauctions.com and you guys can find the, uh, the lot numbers with their pictures. Uh, we have a next, next up here is a Buick Boattail Riv. Yeah, it is a Boattail Rivy and it runs and drives. Um, ran and drove pretty good whenever we got it. We've had it uh, probably for about 12 or 14 years and it has been inside the warehouse ever since we got it. I did drive it when we first got it, and it does. That door open. No, it does. Or at least it should have. They might have them locked. Some of them are probably okay. locked. Jeremiah's got the keys to a decent amount. And of Jeremiah these, is your other brother. Yeah. Well, he's not my brother. He's okay. just one of our workers who's been with us a long time. I so, gotcha. Yeah. But he he lives at the property, so he's always keeping eyes yeah, on this stuff. Yeah, he's always here on site, so he he's like family at this point. Perfect. But that one does run and drive and Beautiful runs and drives good. Too. Yeah. Original paint or is it? It is original. The car's all original. And um, it's the right color for a Rivy, personally. It I really like is. It's beautiful. Like the like the colors. Next one up here, Dodge Dart. Another original paint, or has this been redone? This one's been painted at some point in time, and um, I I don't know much about this one other than that it does run and drive. And Bob's had this one for gosh, probably 20 years or so now. I see the hood's popped. Can we get the hood open? Yeah, on this it one? is popped on this one. Let's see what's going on. Oh, a little slant Just six. Slant six. But this one does run and drive. It does run and drive. Yeah. You know, I, I personally like the slant six. They they don't have a ton of power, but they just seem to be easy to tinker with and always reliable. It's to drive. a cool car too. I mean, it doesn't have to have a you know big block, and I mean it's a two-door hard top and no. This, Oh, it is, it is a post car. Or well, it, it, you know, with even being oh, a... Oh, okay, yeah. Even being a slant six, somebody can always, you know, if they decide they need something more, a little more later power. on. Yeah. And it's still a, a pretty solid car and a good starting point. And it's a good looking color too, yep. so. Perfect. Next one here, we have the Lucky 13. Yeah, and this one's kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. It does have a Hemi in it. Um, it's something that we picked up that was an old drag car and it came out of Utah, and we've had it for a while now, too. It does run and drive. Um, it has... Is it a 331 Hemi? Yeah, it okay. is. It, it has some parts with it as well. There was a small leak in the radiator, so there's a radiator that comes with it. So it probably wouldn't be something anyone would want to try to drive very far, but it does run and drive. Man, this and thing it is just, super cool. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got the look. And what year know. is this? 
Um, I'm not actually 100% for sure which year this one was. Kind of looks like a 40, 41 or 46. Yeah, I would, I would err to the listings on that because I'm not 100%. Yeah, that's the whole for thing, sure. guys. Everyone that watches my videos knows that uh, I don't always get the years right. So yeah, always if we say something wrong, look up the uh, look up the lot number, and that'll have all the correct information. We have a what is this? A Dodge? Yeah, a Dodge Royale with a Hemi in it. So. Um, not 100% for sure on the year on this. I, I'm pretty sure it was a 53. I'm sure somebody's probably going to laugh and say, no, it's this. But <laughs> Don't worry. If we say it wrong, they're going to correct us in the I, comments. I'm sure they will. But this one, uh, you know, it, it's kind of sad and sentimental. Um, Bob's brother, my Uncle Butchie, this was his, and this was his first car. Um, but it, it's just at a state that it has been sitting inside with us for 20 years. Did he buy it brand new or? So he bought it used, but of course this was in the 60s. Okay. Um, but we're just never going to get to the point of, of being able to do it. And I mean, then someone we... that's going to going to put it back on the road and give it the yeah. love it deserves. Yeah. And it does run and move. Of course, the tires are pretty bad. Like I said, it's been Wouldn't sitting. Wouldn't want to drive it. No. It, it would limp itself around a little bit and that's about it. But. It does have a decent amount of sentimental value, one that's a little sad to let go, but... Uh, and it came out of Kansas City, Kansas, Davidson Bros. Yeah, it's been around here for a long time. They lived in downtown Kansas City in the 60s whenever Butchie got this. I mean, that's super cool. Super cool. So next to that, that's super cool, is a Corvette with side pipes. Yeah, I don't really know anything about this one. I think he got this one with another car. Um, I'm pretty sure it runs, but I don't really know how long we've had it around. This one and a white one, he got at the same time, and I know very, very little about this one here. Okay. 10-4, that one's number 27B for the lot. We have a 79 to 81 Firebird here. Yep, and this one runs and drives, um, and it came from the Kansas City area as well, and I'm pretty sure it's been in the Kansas City area pretty much its whole life. Um, the gentleman we got it from had had it since the 80s. Nice interior. So yeah, it's it's been around quite a while. And it's really a, a pretty solid car for one of these. Um, of course, it needs some love too, but it's... It's it, a hell of a good start. Yeah, it is a great starting point. It's pretty solid and uh, it, it's it's tight and, and a great point for someone to start. And these cars are just so much more desirable than they once were. That's the truth. I've got an 81 uh, Z28, and yeah, five years ago they were, you know, wanted a first gen, and now they're starting yeah. to, they're slowly starting to come up in popularity, which is cool. Yeah. Now is this one, I don't remember if I saw this one. This one. one's an 11, and um, we got this one and a blue one at the same time. The blue one's not in the sale. And this one is though, right? This one is okay, in the so sale. and modern it runs... muscle for anyone that yep. uh, wants something a little newer here. It is a Hemi car. Yeah, it runs and drives good, and um, you know, it's yeah, it's it's a an automatic car. So, mom and dad were both wanting one at the same time. So she <laughs> ended up with the automatic one. He ended up with a manual one, a blue one. So, pretty cool. All righty, should we head this way? Yeah, head over to the Jaguar there. So this is a Jag. I was gonna say what. It what is, is a this? Jag. I believe it's a 37 or 8. I know it's, I'm sure, again, in the listing. It'll say for sure. This is uh, literally only the second time I've seen this car. We bought this car and put it in a, a storage building of ours. Man, this thing is so cool. Basically right when we got it. Pre-war. Yeah, it's very unique, very unique car. A lot of them people buy to use for, you know, um, wedding services and Dude. stuff like that that's that's pretty much the norm as to what they end up getting used for is wedding services man this thing is sweet front suicide doors yeah it's this. a very very unique and cool car have you ever had this one running or do you remember no not that i'm aware of i don't i, I believe it's pretty much all there but i yeah i mean it, it does appear to all be there um it I, I personally have never heard it run. If it if they did get it to run for the sale, it would say in the listing, but. Yeah, fair enough. I've never personally heard this one run if it does, so. Man, what a super cool car though. It is very, very cool. Just totally that time period look of. It is, I mean, just the, the body 30s style. gangster body style there, yep. yeah. Very Something cool. Something Al Capone would, well, 
Maybe not. If he could have afforded it. There I you suppose. go. Exactly. I guess he could have always stolen it. He stole pretty much everything anyway. So. <laughs> Couple 57 Chevys. We have a wagon and a yeah. And a so 57 sedan. wagon here. This one's got an LS in it. It's got a 5.3 with an automatic, and um, it still needs a bunch of tinkering. But it does run and drive down the road. 5.3 and LS. Yeah. You would have fooled me. Yeah. It's, uh, it's such a popular combination nowadays. It just works so well for these old cars. Yep. Now, does this one have an LS in it too? No, <laughs> this one's still got the original drivetrain in it. Does this one run, do you know, or? I don't know at all on this one. I wish to remind yeah, it was over while. here to tell us, but I don't, I don't believe so. It's missing a little bit of the floor, not too yeah. much, though. Well, you know, the good thing with these Tri-5s, yeah, I don't believe this one runs, but the good thing with these Tri-5s is everything's available, and it's, it's easy to order, you know, you just, Go online and order the parts for it. Anything you yeah, might need. Yeah, 235. I mean, easy, easy to work on. Yeah. Moving on from the 57s here, we have a pair of. I believe these are 61s. Yeah, they are both 61s. Both so Oldsmobiles. You know, it would be uh, it, it would be great if somebody bought them together, of course, for the parts. So. You know, the two door is just such a cool looking car with the, that bubble top. Yeah, and, the bubble top is just so iconic looking. But um, I, I never have personally heard this run. Now, I, I think it did run when we got it, and they may have got it running again for the sale, but I, I've not personally heard it. And now, is this one a 394? Do you know? Or? I don't know. Okay. On that it'll, be in, it'll be in the listing, like all of these. Bench seat car, manual windows, dynamic 88. Next to that's a Super 88. That's a four-door hardtop, same year. Really decent interior. Yep, some of the parts, of course, will transfer over between the two, and it would make for building one great car. They really are cool cars when they're all completed and looking nice. And they're pretty the unique. I mean, you don't really see a whole lot of the Oldsmobiles. No, it's it's a pretty unique body style. I mean, everybody loves the bubble top in general, but that particular one is yep. it's pretty unique. Very looking. uncommon, yeah. Yeah. So next to that's a 67 Chevelle. I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember for sure either which year this one was. I, I think so. I think it was actually a 68. 68. Pretty okay. sure this one was a 68. I'm not going to force that door. Bucket seats are, are in there. Wood yeah. grain steering wheel. It's got quite a bit of the parts in there with the car. 66 Chevelle. We were both off. I'll ah, see. Wrong way on it. <laughs> Uh, motor, nope, no motor, no trans, just a no, nice roller. No motor in that one. Good builder, you can turn it into an SS clone if you want to. What's uh, what's this gem right here? A coronet. Yep, it's a coronet. Kind of got pipes. a unique Mad Max look going with it It does. There. It really does. I think someone had tried to turn it into a, 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 you know, pretend toy race car at some point in time with it. The, the hood scoop's very unique looking on it, for sure. Four speed. Was an automatic car, has a four speed in it now. Bucket seats. Yep, and it's got a 440 in this one, and it does run. It does run. It does run. Yeah, This one's definitely. 36B. It's got a posi in it as well. Definitely a very unique toy. It Absolutely. Uh, would make for a lot of fun for someone to roast some tires with, being a 440 <laughs> and a four-speed, for sure. So, Yeah, you need to spend some money on some tires if you're going to do that. Well, yeah, you know, maybe buy stock in a tire company or something. Yep, yep. Now, what is this, a Dodge? Yeah, it's an Aspen, Aspen RT. Um, not 100, he's had several of these. 74, 5, 6, somewhere in there would be the body style of it, so I'm not particularly sure which this one is. Automatic on the floor, console, bucket seat. Should be a 318 in it. That'd be the base engine, correct? The 318? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm just fairly certain this one is a 318 in it. RT. So that's a Dodge. Yep, an A100 there. A100, that, that's what they that are. That one's a slant six as well. I do know a decent amount about this one. I drove this one when I was in mm -hmm. high school, so. 
This one came in and um, I really liked the body style on it. It uh, needed a head gasket. I was told if I could fix that, I could drive it. So that you did. Spent a weekend and uh, got, got a lot of enjoyment out of it. Nice, it does man. run and move. The brakes are not up on it, but it runs and moves. Could probably load on a trailer. Yeah, it would load on a trailer. It put itself in this spot, but it, the brakes are kind of iffy on it. Okay. You wouldn't want to be going downhill on a okay. trailer probably. Fair, fair enough. VW van? Yep, VW van. I'm not 100, well, it's a, one of the trucks actually, but I'm not 100% sure on the year on this. I know it does run. First one I've ever seen before. Yeah, it's very it's, unusual. It's an extended cab, which is pretty, pretty unique on it. It runs and moves and uh, very cool, very cool truck. Yeah, very, very unusual. Yeah. And the last one here in the row is a Another Chevelle Malibu. In yeah, this one. I believe that one's a '66 as well. Um, Convertible. I don't, I don't really know much in particular about it, though. Fairly decent body on it. The top. Yes, it does. Needs a new top, but the interior is not bad. Well, well and then all the bows and everything are there on the top, so you've got everything there you would need to be able to put one on it. So. Absolutely. I mean, it's a good, it's a good car for restoration for yeah, sure. Yeah, great start for someone there. We don't know a whole lot about this one. It's a Chevrolet Impala. It's another Impala. Um, Looks like it was a super sport. It, it is actually a legitimate SS car. Um, there's no motor. The 65 that's, with the tail lights. That's, that's about all I know about it. It's one that we've had around a long time as well. So, Good project car. Same with this one right here, this Challenger. Yeah, it's a 360, and um, it, it, it did run and drive when we got it. I, I really don't know if it does at this point. And what year is this one? 71, I okay. believe, or 71. But we've had this one since 01 or 02, and it, like I said, it did run and drive at that point in time, and there just were other cars that we redid ahead of it, and it's, it's just kind of set since then. It is a 360. And uh, ran really well. It had supposedly been rebuilt. So this one's a little newer yeah. Charger. Probably yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about this one in particular. It's been hit fairly hard in the rear. Yeah, the interior's it, in it though. Column shift car. We definitely need a quarter panel and some loving <laughs> going back there. That it would. That it would, but they make all this stuff now. I mean, yeah, they do make pretty much anything. These can you both could be want. fixed for sure. Yeah. Well, this is no muscle car here. No. Early 50s Ford. Yeah, I think it's a 53 or 54. Ford Omatic, so it's an automatic on the column. Yeah, it's an inline six car, and I know it does run and move. Again, run and drive, I suppose, is a vague term because it would run and drive around here, but I don't know that I would take this one. It's been sitting a long time. Probably not take it on the road. To me, a roadworthy would be. We need a to go more. through it because uh, I know it's been moved around on the lot, but I don't know that any of us have ever drove this one on the road since we got it. Okay. Okay, fair enough. This one's a what? A GTO? Yeah, and I, I don't know anything about this one. I'm sorry. That's okay. There, all the information you'll need is on the website, everyone. So, looks like it's had some body work done, but probably would need to be redone. Yeah, I, I believe it came from a friend of Bob's. Um, I just don't know the particulars on how long we've had it around or anything. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. A couple 64 Impalas sitting right here. Yeah. Uh, the one's a bucket seat car. The other one here, they both, they both need some love. This 64 is a bench seat, factory air car. It's kind of unusual. The interior is redone, so this car was redone at one point. This car is an automatic on the floor. Factory air as well. It's got the SS dash trim. I'm, Wondering if this is an SS or not. I don't know. I'm sure they would have gone off the codes already on that stuff, but I don't know in particular on that one. Yeah, a couple 64s right there. 
Yeah, I personally really like the 64s. We've had several of them over the years. No, they're good looking cars. Yeah, and they just drive so nice as well. I, I love this truck though, man. This, I don't know what it is about this, but yeah, it's Yeah, the patina is pretty much perfect it on is, it. It is, it's perfect. It, it, it wore in just right. Fairly solid truck. Oh, it's is this a, a 3100? 30... It's a three quarter ton three -quarter truck. Ton? Yeah, and it's very un unusual. It's a long bed truck, so. Got a lot of uh, extra room back there if you actually wanted to make it, you know, usable for like a, a fun shop truck project. Yeah, it's got a hell of a nice patina to it as well. Yeah, it does. You and don't want to sleep on this one, guys. Said that the bed length just makes it so fun. It's such an unusual thing to see. Most Do you know if this one stone. runs or? I don't know. Okay. It, um, it didn't when we first got it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't now. Okay. All right, moving on from the Chevy truck here, we have a Ford truck and an extra cab. What can you tell me on this one? Well, and as you said, it did come with an extra cab. Um, you know, I, I think when we picked it up, it was on a trade with a guy, and I don't remember exactly how we ended up with the trade, but it came with the extra cab, and the extra cab's in great shape. And um, it, it's got one spot in the floor that needs fixed. I guess the guy got the cab thinking he was gonna need to change it, but really the cab on the truck was it just needs about the same as this one anyways. It just needs a floor patch. So the cab will come with the truck? Yeah, cab okay. goes with the truck on this one. And um, I know it did run and drive when we got it, so I'm assuming it still does for the sale as well. Yeah, the interior's been redone. Just needs a little bit of uh, floor work here. Yeah, so the Ooh. cab does come with it should somebody decide to go that route, but really it needs about the same either way. Yep, so. yep. Another, I don't uh, know for sure what's in it though. Looks like he may have it wired down though. Okay. Yeah. So it's got a motor, but uh, the hood's wired shut. I'm sure she had it, yeah, he's got it wired down right now, probably for whenever it goes to ship. I'm sure she had photos of it in the listings as well there. Perfect. Next one here is a old Tornado. Yeah, another Tornado there. Those are such Oh no, cool... this is a ri uh, Riv. I'm sorry, Riviera. Is it, is it a Riv? Yep. Oh yeah, it is. I misspoke on that one. Straddle bench. I'm not 100% for sure where this car came from or really anything about it. I know the, it did not, we did not get it at the same time. This one's been around a lot longer than the other one. The, but I don't, I don't know exactly where he got it. Fair enough. 58 Impala. Very yeah, iconic. and this one's, I think he got this one in the mid 90s. He bought this and four other cars at the same time. Yeah, she's a little rough, but. I think primarily this one, it does have all the trim there. So if somebody's wanting to build one, there's a lot of reusable parts there at least. The car essentially is complete, of course, minus the weight reduction. <laughs> but uh... Yeah, if you have a, a nice body, it'd probably be easier to make this one a donor. Yeah, and it does have some nice, it does still have some body parts. The hood's in really good shape on it overall. I'm not gonna force um, the hood open. And it's got suspension stuff should you need something for that. And the frame's actually in good shape on it, but the body's pretty. The body's kind of rough. Yep. The body's pretty rough. Fair enough, that one's 43B. All right, let's head back here and check out some of the older stuff. All righty, back here is a square body pickup. We don't have really any information on this. So. Well, I, I know it runs and moves, um, and it came from a friend who had it for a very long time as a, as a extra farm truck. And but I rebuilt the carburetor on it for them in like 03. So I, I, it ran and drove back then, and it ran and drove when we got it from them, which was in 2017. All right, got a couple galaxies here. Yep, so this one runs and moves, and uh, it, it did polish up. Now it's been sitting for a long time, but. Is this a 60? Yeah, but, it, yep, it is. And about 15, 14, 15 years ago, we did polish it and it looked, it polished up real nice, but it's been sitting and faded back since then. It's got a nice interior. Yep. Nice four door, I mean, decent body. It is in pretty good shape overall. When we got it, it ran and drove and I actually took it to Liberty and back at one point in time which is about a 35 minute drive or so back, you know, in the day when we got it. And I know it runs and moves around here, but uh, I don't know if it it's would need still some road to put back, on, put back on the road. Yeah. Another Galaxy. 
two-door hardtop. Does this one run or any? I don't believe so. Okay. It's a small block. I, I, I think it's a 302, but I, I don't, it, it did run at one point in time, but I don't think it does anymore. I think okay. it's just set so long. We've had this one since the mid nineties. There's a key right there, what's that for? Well, I believe it would have been like an ignition kill for back in the day, almost like a security system. Okay. That's kind of interesting, first yeah. time I've seen like that. Yeah, sometimes it seems like some of the 70s stuff I've seen like that. So I'm assuming somebody added that on in the 70s. Okay. Ford Thunderbird? Yeah, T-Bird. It's all complete, it looks like. Uh, the roof suffers from a little bit of cancer with the vinyl top it there. It does, the, the vinyl top just unfortunately has ruined so many of, of these cars over the years probably better as a donor right now anyways. Yeah, and, and it's a shame because really your bolt-on parts of the body are in good shape on the car overall, but the, the roof's pretty rough. Um, and it, it is complete otherwise, so it does have a lot of good parts. Okay, next to? The wagon. 59 there. Parkwood, which is a Bel Air model. Yeah. These are my two favorite just because they're 59s and I'm a 59 guy. It's such an unusual, you know, it's such an unusual vehicle overall. You don't see them very often, so when you do see them, it's just cool. Yep. And it's factory black. I've got a black two-door wagon, so it's kind of cool to see a... So he's had these longer than I've been around. I don't know exactly where they came from, but I, 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 you know, I know he's had them since the mid-80s. And at one point in time, we had four of these. And the other just, two went together to be a complete car, and I think that was the plan with these, but it just never got to that point. Yep. Now the next one here, a lot of people, you ever, if you ever post a 59 Nomad on Facebook, people say they did not make a Nomad. It literally says Nomad <laughs> right there. After 1957, the Nomad went from a nice two-door crazy body style to a high-end Impala trim four-door sedan. So this is a 59 Nomad. It's the most expensive 59 you could have got in 1959, actually more expensive than a Impala convertible. And uh, yeah, they did make them, so. Mom would have been pretty high up taking this to the grocery this, store back in the day. Oh yeah. She'd have looked good in that, you know. I think these brand new, like an Impala convertible, I want to say was like 2,500. I think these were like 2,800. Yeah, I, I could see them being more, again, with the Impala trim, and there's a lot of options really on them there as is. well. There is, I mean, just. It's kind of a shame it just kind of rusted away, you know, but it's it's cool that it survived, you know? Yeah, it's still all there intact, um, you know, overall. It's just, uh, it's, again, got some of that weight reduction starting already, you know? Yeah, and the floor's out of it. But it's a bare bones Nomad, because like, you know, no power seat, no power windows, just, uh, they wanted the high end trim, but didn't need all the extra options, so pretty yeah. cool. All right, from the two 59s, one of them being a Nomad. I'm not gonna fight people anymore on that. They did make a Nomad. We have uh, a Plymouth four-door sedan, correct? Yes. Yeah, Plymouth four-door. I don't know much of the particulars on it. It's in pretty good shape overall, though. Yeah, the interior, oh my lord. That looks identical to a 59 Impala tritone. I wonder if uh, GM stole that from Plymouth. <laughs> well, or it's possible, of course, too. Back redone. in the day, somebody did the seats on it. It does seem to be a mostly original car, looking at the paint and where, yeah, it's, the paints. where it's starting to flake off. It, it looks to be pretty much original underneath there. Um, I'm not 100% for sure when he acquired this or how he acquired it. Or how he acquired it, okay. Again, some of that stuff he buys in a package deal or you get in a package deal with a couple other cars and Sometimes you get a gem that you weren't expecting. Yep, yep, exactly. And we got a Lincoln Mark III here. Big old car. Yep, we got a couple of these in the sale, and I'm not 100% for sure which year this one is. There's another one that is in really nice condition, and this one just is to the point of needing redone, but it's all there. Man, it's so long. That's a big, iconic car. Big car. They drive so good, though. It's, it's just like, like this, though. Yeah, this, with this Cadillac is also an iconic car. Yeah, a big old Caddy, another car that just drives down the road amazing. Just nice, smooth Four rides. Four-door hardtop. Manual seat, manual windows. 
So a base model Cadillac, just like that Nomad. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it does not run. Anymore. Yeah, I would. Uh, I think you're. I think you're safe to say that as well. <laughs> but I mean, hell, the the body is fairly decent. I mean, the nice patina. Yeah, it does appear it was power steering and brakes and stuff originally, which you know, so many Cadillacs had so many options back then. Oh yeah, absolutely. What do we got here? What's what are we looking at here? Just a frame of a. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a Model A, I'm pretty Model a? sure. Okay. Well, I, I think it's actually a Plymouth, but um, I, I'm not 100% for sure of the year on that. But the frame will sell by itself? or is there Yeah, a body the frame that goes will sell it? by itself, okay. and, and it does have engine and a bunch of other parts that go along with it. Okay, next to that, 62B. This is a five-window coupe of some sort. It was a Dodge originally. Um, I think somebody's done a hodgepodge of stuff over the years, so uh, I really don't know what all the car is now, but it, it, it is a Dodge, essentially. Okay. okay, fair enough. Got a good look to it, though. Yeah. Now, what is this right here, Model A? Yeah, and, and that one, I, I know he's had it for quite a while. I just don't know really much about it. Okay, no, no problem. This one would be a Chrysler product, possibly? I don't know. There's no badging on it. No seats, just pretty much a body. I don't know. 60B is what this one is in the auction. We'll look it up when I get home and we'll see what it is. But if you're interested or you guys know what this is, 60B is the number. Got another project here. Yeah. And got a freshly rebuilt flathead in it. Any idea what year this one is? No, I don't know for sure what year it is, actually. I do know that the motor and tranny stuff was all redone in it, and the body was off, and the frame was repainted, and a bunch of new stuff on it. It does, or at least it did run. Um, I know it runs and moves under its own accord with some help, but I, I don't think it has everything plumbed and wired up to run at this point, though. But the motor and tranny stuff was rebuilt on it. And it is um, a flathead. Yeah, and we got this one along with one other car. I don't remember which one the other car was, though. This one says 40 Ford it back is. row. It is a 40 Ford. At least a good shell of one. Yeah, one that can be built for sure. Yeah. Need some floor work and a frame, but these are getting harder and harder to find every, I mean, yeah, just finding the steel car to start with from the body just yep. gets more and more difficult all the time. Yeah, I bet this one goes for crazy money with the bullet holes and everything. <laughs> it's funny to think back in the day, somebody shooting at it just didn't care, didn't think anything about it ever being worth anything. Just an old car. Yeah, but you know, they're, they're just so, again, hard to find even for the shell purposes. Yep. Now what is, th what is this? It's a four-door suicide door car. Well, it, it's a Buick, but I don't remember exactly what year. Late 30s? Um, this is one that we got in 06. Let's see if the body number will tell us. 1935. 35. I knew it was a 30s. I was thinking it was a 37 or something, but yeah, it's a Buick and it came from a collection down in Oklahoma. It came from Southern Oklahoma. And the guy had, he, he just had that weird oddball collection. He had a bunch of Plymouths and Buicks and Dodges and random stuff. And we got a couple of them from him. Fair enough. Another Plymouth? Another Plymouth. This one's been around a very long time as well. Two door sedan. Yeah. And then finally here, gonna round this thing out with a DeSoto, DeSoto four-door hardtop. Fire dome, so this would have had a Hemi, I believe. Yeah. And she's still sitting in there, still in there. And I know it, it, it did turn over. I'm sure it does not run anymore without some, some extra tinkering, because it has been sitting a long time. But those valve covers, man, are just, what an awesome car, what an awesome engine. Yep. All right, you want to go inside and see the cool stuff or the nice cool stuff? Yeah, the nice, the nicer of the cool stuff. All right, I got two Corvettes back here. 
Um, it is fairly tight, so I'm really not going to get up close, but uh, you guys can look all these up and get up close and personal photos. Um, this is all the, the nice, nice stuff in the collection. Um, so I guess what's that orange car, what year, and then what year is the, the red car here? So the, the orange car is a 69, and it is a big block car originally. It has a small block in it now, but it was originally a 427 with side pipe car. Um, it does run and drive good, and, you know, it has decent interior and paint on it. Yeah, it's um, a beautiful it's, car just from 20 feet away. Yep, yeah, it's in overall good condition. And this one, I believe, is a 75 or 6. Um, I'm not 100% for sure on this. But this is one that we have had around forever and literally was Bob's and mine daily driver at different points in time. So this car runs and drives out perfectly. It's a small block car. Um, and I mean, this is something you could get in and drive an and hour just enjoy or two it. and just enjoy it. It runs perfect and everything always works on it. It's, we've had it around for 25 years. The tops even work nice on it, for, which is a miracle so often for Corvettes. So. And this one here is a 30. Yeah, 32. Um, and it's on a custom chassis on it. Is it a steel body or fiberglass? It is a steel body. Okay. That's, it is a steel body. For the, Ford guys, that's, that's a big deal right there. The rear fenders are fiberglass on the car, but it is a steel body car. And um, it's something that the, the actual shell, the body of the car, um, one of our body guys at the shop, it was his dad's car in the 40s and 50s. So Damn. the body's been around for a very long time. Actually, when I was a real little kid in the 80s, I used to play inside just the shell. So, but then, and then the chassis came from a car that had gotten smashed in the side of the body, um, like a pickup truck hit it. So the body, and it was a fiberglass car, so really it kind of got an upgrade whenever it got redone. Nice. Um, but it's got a built small block in it, and then it's got fuel injection on it as well. So. And it's beautiful. I mean, the black car is just beautiful. Yeah. All right, sitting next to that is... Um, it's a, yeah, it's a two-door sedan. Um, it's got a, a small block Ford in it. It runs and drives down the road real nice. It's got Corvette suspension and stuff on it, also on a custom frame as well. So um, Another steel body? Yeah, the body on it is steel as well. Very cool. 1960 Impala right here next to that. Yep. Got Looks like an all-original car. It is an all-original car other than front suspension stuff. So um, it's got CPP lowering spindles and disc brakes and stuff like that. And it runs and drives out. Yeah, super nice original car. Yep. We've had it around 25-ish years and it, it has been mostly inside. Um, it was underneath the carport for about four or five years whenever it was in between getting drove by me and Bob. But it runs and drives out good as well. Perfect. Next one here, Ford truck. Yeah, it's a 66 Ford. And um, we, we bought it out of the south. It is originally a southern truck. And it's an inline six. Someone has put AC inside it, and it runs and drives down the road great. All right, guys, so I've learned that in the last videos, when we get too close to the cars, it makes for a not great video. So I'm gonna have Dan, we're gonna kind of look at these from afar. Uh, he's gonna point out the numbers or the lot numbers. And if you guys are interested in seeing them up close, I'll then you that. can look them up. I just wanna keep the video quality as good as we can without losing a bunch of quality there. But there is a lot of nice, nice stuff in here. Don't get me wrong. So first one here, Ford Wagon, 13B. Yep. yep, so we've got 13B. It is a Ford Wagon, four-door, the interior, and it is completely original and in overall good shape. It has been painted at some point in its life, but um, it drives down the road really, really good. Um, and it, somebody's put an overdrive conversion kit on it, so it will do highway speeds. And it, it is a V8, um, and it's been converted to 12 volts as well. So it's something that you could just absolutely enjoy with the family. Okay, the MG back here, MG yep. convertible. Yep, we got an MGA and it's still a 1500 original in it. Looks um, like 9B is the number on that. Yep, yeah, 9B is the number on that one. And it drives, uh, I'm really sad to see that one go. It drives very well and it's very fun to drive. That T-Bird is a 57? Yep, so that one's a 57 T-Bird. I'll hop around there for you. Yeah, let me see if I can kind of... So I can get the numbers for you as well. So this is a 57, and it came out of Southern California. It came from San Diego. This one's 7B. It's got fuel injection on it. The interior is original. The body has been painted at some point in time. Um, but overall, it runs and drives just Man, really the, well. These cars, I mean, the, the video does not do them justice how nice these cars are that are inside here. Uh, what are these two right here, Dan? 
So that one is another T bird, and I'm sure I'm going to get shot for not remembering what year it is. I think it's a 78 or early 8. It, it's a big car. It is a big car. It's a small block car. It is originally from here in Excelsior Springs. It was sold from the local dealership, brand new, to a gentleman that lived about five miles up the road. And um, it's all original, original low mileage car. It was his wife's car. She got sick and stopped driving it. Um, so it, it is all original. This one is also from around here. It is mostly original as well. And that one's um, 11B, this Mercury. Yep, it's a Cougar. And um, we actually, me and Jeremiah, have been using this as our daily for about a month now. So nice. it does drive very well. It, it, <laughs> it, it uh, definitely goes down the road just fine. So. Nice. The SS Chevelle here, 67? Yep. So it's a, it's, a, it's a 66, I believe. Is, is the, it's a 66. Um, so it's a 327 car. And Do you care if I open the door? Go right ahead. This one's 22B, runs and drives very, very well. Oh, it just smells new. It just smells like a fresh new interior. The oh. 61 Biscayne back there, 19B, that's a beautiful color. So I was off camera telling you about the Jeep Estate sale that yes. I bought. Yep. That is a one owner car that was included in the sale. So nice. um, it is a 61, it's a four door Malibu or, you know, Biscayne. But uh, yep. so he bought it brand new for his wife. And in 67 or 68, she got a big scratch in the fender on the other side. While I was in the body shop getting fixed, he went and bought her a brand new Impala. So then it just sat in their garage. And so that car is original paint, original interior. Other than the other fender, it's original interior wow. and paint. Yep, original drivetrain, original interior and paint. Six cylinder three speed? It, it is, I'm pretty sure it's an automatic car actually. Okay. Yeah, I mean, guys, that car is beautiful. It's an automatic car. So again, I originally picked this up, and uh, I never actually got to see it out of the garage before I got talked out of it by Bob. So it's been his ever since then. I but gotcha. I, I did get to drive it to anyone that's familiar with the area, Richmond, Missouri, and back, which is 25-ish minute drive. So it, it drives down the road very well. Perfect. Next one is a Lincoln Town yep. Car? Yep, got another or Mark III here. Okay. Another big old boat, should be a 460 big block in it, would be a Ford big block in it. and um, It's mostly original as well, drives out really nice too. Is the Eldorado going in the sale? I actually don't know if he's putting that one in there or not. I would hate to say yes and then break somebody's heart. It is. Okay, uh, what's it looks the... like that's 12B. 12B. I'm gonna go so around the, to the other side. Convertible is in the auction. And yeah. this one has been inside here since we got it. So. Yeah, the interior looks beautiful from the inside, but or from this, the back side here. Yeah. All right, and then the last one I'm going to back up here is a Pontiac Grand Prix. Yeah, 74 Grand Prix, and I uh, believe it's a J-Code 400 car. I'm pretty sure on that. So um, it is essentially all original as well. Um, it has had some paint work done on the back of it. I think it just had chips or maybe spotting rust at some point in time, but it is mostly original car as well. And Bob used it for a daily when he first picked it up and it drives out really nice too. Perfect. Dan, thank you so much for showing uh, or taking the time here to show me all these cars. No problem. All right, guys, so we, we did miss a car. So here's that, here's that 69 Corvette and the color is just spectacular, side pipes. It's just hard to get the camera, you know, to show the angles nice and not fill a screen with just a body panel. But yeah. This is a what a Jeepster you said? Yeah, it's a little Jeepster and it does run and drive down the road really well. It's it's essentially all original. Someone has put an Overland Overdrive in it, um, so that way it could be more road enjoyable. But the interior is really nice, and we've got new stuff for the top already in box. And this is 14B. Yep, 14B here on. It this. does run and drive. And then, yeah, I thought there was probably at least one or two more. There's um, 60, it should be 65 or 6 Impala that's over there. There's a really nice Impala over there, guys. We can go around the other side. Okay, we'll go do that here in a second. Beautiful 1965 Impala all by itself back here. Yep, 65 SS. It is a 327 automatic. And um, this is one of the few ones that was on a salvage title unfortunately, because it had a minor interior fire in the back seat when we got it. So 
So it's salvage title or prior salvage? Prior salvage okay. title. So it's prior at this point, but when we picked it up, of course, it was salvage. It is a beautiful car, though. It is. It, it's it's such a shame because, you know, it, it is such a nice original looking car, but um, it has just, been painted. Did you fully restore it or did you buy it like this? No, I mean, it was in nice shape when we got it. Um, it was originally a maroon car, I believe, but it is, of course, red now. Okay. Black on, or red on black, though, you cannot beat that color combination. No, can't go wrong with that. This is another one, as you notice, so many of these that are, are good drivers, we just, we really tried to enjoy. Bob drove this one for about a year as a daily driver, so. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd be all right taking this to work every day. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> um, you know, it's pretty nice on that, other than worrying about where you park everywhere. Yeah, you yeah, know? watch out for people dinging you. Yes. All right, everyone, you guys have seen Bob's Thinning the Herd collection. Uh, this will all be done next Saturday the 11th. Yep, um, Saturday the 11th at 10 a.m. VanderbrinkAuctions.com. Dan, thanks for taking the time, man, to show me all the cars and kind of talk about these. Glad to. I appreciate you coming out and look at them, and hopefully somebody makes a good home out of them because we just really love the cars and want to see them go to a good place. And there's like six or eight that I'm going to be watching, so I'll probably be back on, on Sunday <laughs> to pick them up. Um, online bidding, in-person bidding, Excelsior Springs, uh, Missouri. So thanks again, Dan. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, comment your favorite car to the bunch, and subscribe if you're brand new. And until next time, my name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars, and I will catch you guys later.